Nathan, you can go. Um, Carl, uh, congratulations again of on the second test. I just want to ask, uh, first, first of all, uh, Super Amorous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask, uh, did did Wamak Boys High School um, give you any like uh, message of support um, from for 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 this tour? Uh, leading up into the tour or after after the last game? Uh, well, leading up to the tour and after the last game. Um, yeah, I think there's been a couple of messages on their Facebook page uh, from the, the Old Boys Union as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I've stayed in contact with uh, a couple of my coaches uh, from Weinberg. Uh, Eric Lefson's one that comes to mind. Um, yeah, just sort of sent me a message saying congratulations on the debut last week. Um, yeah, and there's always, I mean, every time, uh, every time you do well, you sort of represent the protest or something or perform for the Cobras. There's always support on their Facebook pages and stuff. So um, yeah, that's sort of the, the communication that I've got from them. Steve? Uh, hi, Kyle. Um, as, as far as batting out there was concerned, it looked extremely difficult. Um, just take us through what was the most difficult parts of it. Yeah, it was quite tough. Um, there's obviously, I don't know if you guys can see on the TV, but there's quite been quite a lot of weather around um, throughout the day. I think the start was delayed with a bit of rain um, and there was quite a lot of rain yesterday as well, which made the yeah the wicket didn't really see any sunlight. Um, so yeah, it was a bit tacky in the morning. Um, obviously, with the overcast conditions, there was quite a bit of swing swing about. And then yeah, after lunch, when the wicket started firming up, um, it started sort of uh, just moving a little bit quicker off the wicket. Uh, so that was sort of the challenges that we faced. Um, yeah, obviously they got a really, really skillful bowling lineup and I think they, they're they really good at using the, the Duke's ball um, to their advantage. So yeah, they made scoring quite tricky, um, but yeah, that that's pretty much it. Just the overcast conditions and the fact that the pitch was a little bit, uh, yeah, I liked a bit of sunlight and it was still quite tacky in the beginning. Telford followed by Ken, Tunis and Kanyiso. Hello, Kyle. Um, you seem to you you were out there for a long time with Dean Elgar, and then there seemed to be a lot of communication between the two of you. Um, can you can you kind of summarise what what was the conversation about, more or less? Um, I think a lot of it was just um, obviously we have game plans and stuff going into every every match, and I think a lot of it was just um, obviously I'm in my in my second Test match. There's not a lot of experience there, so a lot of it from Dean was just sort of reminding me to stick to my processes, uh, just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, Obviously, with the, with the conditions difficult and stuff, you don't want to focus too much on, on scoring runs. It's all about uh, spending time out there in the middle. So it was just uh, messages from him just reminding me to just sort of stay patient, uh, stick to the processes. Uh, just remember the chats that we've had throughout the week. And, and yeah, just don't, don't do anything different. Just stay boring um, and just yeah, spend time out in the middle. Okay. Kenny. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm struggling to move my cursor to the unmute button there. Thanks. Uh, hi, Carl. Well, well batted. Um, just following up on that, um, it it looked like it took a lot of sort of self denial out there while you're at the crease. I mean, we we know you are quite a stroke stroke playing batsman um, when conditions suit. How, how much did you have to deny yourself out there? And it looked like Dean. Uh, Dean obviously giving a master class on the same thing from the other end. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously you guys will know I'm, I'm quite a free scoring player. Uh, sort of the way I play, I like to yeah score quickly. Um, but yeah, I think I found out in the in the first test is probably not the way to go on this this wicket. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, a lot of the a lot of the chats out there from Dean really helped me. Um, I've been working a lot, uh, a lot in the week on sort of not changing the way I play, but just uh, sort of adjusting a bit to these conditions, uh, putting certain shots away that I'm that I'm used to playing uh, quite often. And yeah, it was really nice to have Dean there just to sort of remind me of those chats, uh, remind me of the net sessions that I've had where I've had to sort of uh, work on on, like you said, restricting myself. Um, so yeah, there definitely was a lot of that out there, uh, but fortunately. Um, I had Dean on the other end just to just to keep in my ear and just keep reminding me um, not to lose that focus and just stick to the process that we've sort of been working on the last couple of days. Dennis, can you start? And then we'll finish with Fidoz. Hi, Kyle. Um, I don't know if you if you saw uh, in the in the T Twenty series against Pakistan, there was quite an outrage that you didn't play. Um, and then Boucher said basically that there are senior players and that 
guys like you and yourself and Yanaman are, are in the wings and you'll get that an opportunity. And I guess it's kind of the same in the test squad with you playing with Temba being injured. I was wondering if that, um, does that put a bit more pressure on you? Do you feel like you have to really perform um, when you when you go and, and, and might, can that make you a bit more stressed out? Um, I think anytime you play for the Proteas, you're under pressure to perform, to be honest with you. I don't think uh, any outside situation really enhances that. I think there's, there's always a lot of pressure to perform. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I did read a little bit of, of the stuff that you guys are writing, um, but at the end of the day, it's I'm still young and there's a process. Um, there's a process. You just got to stay patient and stay ready for when your opportunity does come. Um, personally, I don't feel any extra pressure um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm in the camp and I've had a lot of good chats with the coach and the captain and I, I know exactly where I stand. Um, so for me, there, there wasn't really any extra pressure. Um, yeah, there's not really any extra pressure sort of just hanging on the side, uh, waiting. It's just, yeah, you know, I just got to wait, wait your turn and when your opportunity does come, you got to take it. Can you, sir? Um, good morning, Kyle. Um, well done on your, on your very tough innings. Um, are you able to highlight the differences that you've experienced in Test cricket as compared to that golden run of form you had towards the end of the four-day franchise series? Uh, obviously, I, I don't, it's difficult to say that or difficult to point out differences. I mean, obviously, there's when you're playing franchise cricket, uh, yeah, I don't want to say it's, it's less of a competition, but I feel like what I found in, in this test series so far, the, the short amount of time that I've spent at the crease, you sort of, you don't really get a break. I think sometimes you can go through periods where you got to get through uh, a five over spell of, of really ruthless bowling back home and you, once you get through that, you can uh, score freely again and, and kick on. But I felt, I felt like, um, yeah, definitely from the way I batted today and watching how, how the, the previous test sort of panned out, I feel like um, you can't really switch off. It's not just getting through that five overs. You've literally just got to get through the whole day. There's no really, they never really, the bowlers don't really put their foot off the pedal. Um, it's sort of yeah, full intensity, full concentration for the whole day. Um, where maybe franchise cricket, it's, it's to a lesser extent. You do get periods where you can sort of, um, yeah, like I said, cash in a little bit. Um, test cricket, I've just found you've, you've got to be on it every single ball. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're going to get found out. For those. Hi, Kyle. It sounds like um, in both tests, obviously, you were waiting on finding out about injuries to Timber to know whether you were going to play or not. Can you just tell us a little bit about... Uh, how you found out uh, each time that you were going to play and kind of how you prepared with the knowing or not knowing and just what that felt like? Um, I think as a professional sportsman, no matter what you do, I think whether you know you're going to be playing or not, it's always advised to prepare like you are going to be playing. So that's something that I've just tried to do. Obviously, uh, coming on this trip, I knew that I was the backup batsman if anything went wrong. Um, and I was sort of aware leading up to the first test that Temba had a bit of a niggle. Um, so in the warm-up games and stuff, I got a good good run, a good opportunity to to get my, my preparations um, done. Um, so, yeah, I, I felt really ready. Um, I found out, I think, uh, before the first test, probably about 2 o'clock uh, the, the day before. So I had, had quite a lot of time to just take it all in and, and prepare. And I think it was a similar, similar situation for this test match. Um, yeah, obviously, Temba... Um, holding up his fitness and seeing where he is. Um, yeah, I was just sort of preparing that, that there's a possibility that I'll play again. Um, and yeah, same thing, I think about two opposite to uh, coach said, uh, you in just, yeah, enjoy it. So yeah, I had plenty of time to prepare. Thanks very much everyone for joining us. Um, have a good evening and we'll see you in tomorrow's post-play um, press conference. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Carl. Well done. Thank you.